Let me put my cap on. Half my body isn't functioning. July the 4th, 2011. Sarajevo, the capital of the Muslim Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina. This rally has gathered on a square to watch a live broadcast from the trial of Radko Mladic at The Hague. More than anyone else, these people blame Radko Mladic for the deaths of their husbands, brothers and children. The same day, the SNP 1389 youth movement held one of its regular protest actions in Serbia's capital, Belgrade. We are not out to vandalize buildings or the city. This is a political act that would be normal anywhere else. SNP 1389 supports and defends our heroes Ratko Mladic and Radovan Karadic. They defended the Serbian people on their own soil. We founded our organization to help protect our heroes from the slander campaign of the Hague Tribunal. According to a public opinion poll, more than half of the Serb population were against Ratko Mladic being handed over to the Hague Tribunal. But nearly a quarter of the country's population accused the government of deliberately dragging their feet over the search for Mladic. in science and technology from around Russia. We've got the future covered. The quiet provincial town of Srebrenica is one of many in Bosnia. Only the walls of several buildings, pockmarked with bullets and shells, serve as a reminder of the bitter fighting between Serbs and Muslims. Even though there are many Serbian villages around Srebrenica, the town has a predominantly Muslim population. What was later called a massacre took place here in 1995. According to different sources, anywhere between 2,000 and 8,000 people were either killed or went missing. The main blame for the killings is on Radko Mladic. I lost all three of my sons and I lost my husband. What can I say about it? Just look around. All these people weren't guilty of anything. Back in 1993, Srebrenica was a Muslim enclave on the territory of a self-declared entity called Republika Srpska. Srebrenica was surrounded by Mladic's troops, but Muslim troops led by Nasa Oric were in control of the situation inside the town. January the 7th is Christmas for the Orthodox Church. On that day in 1993, Nasa Oric's troops launched a massive attack on nearby Serbian villages. The village of Kravitsa is 15 kilometers from Srebrenica. Kristo Stojanovic, a Serb, has lived here with his family since his birth. On January the 7th, 1993, he was on the front line. In the afternoon, he and fellow soldiers were told that the Muslims had captured Kravitsa after attacking it from Srebrenica. The Serbs were ordered to retreat. I could get back to Kravitz only after troops liberated the village 72 days after. There was a heavy stink of burnt flesh in the village. I found the body of my father 100 meters from the house. He had been stabbed in the gut. Crows had pecked out his face. This footage filmed by police shows Serbs massacred in villages around Srebrenica. 
Various estimates put the number of Serbian villages ruined by Nasa Orich's troops during the war at more than 100. The names of 3,262 casualties have now been established. Post-mortem reports make it clear that most of the people were tortured before they were killed. Serbia's Minister for Public Health, Zoran Stankovic, worked at the Institute for Forensic Studies during the war. He witnessed the inquest into the deaths of the Serbs and exhumations from mass graves in Bosnia. We saw the bodies of captive military men with their heads chopped off. One Serb, for example, had been hit on the head with a blunt object and his eyes had been cut out. Moreover, it was clear that his eyes were removed when he was still alive. Many of the bodies bore signs of a very cruel method of murder. We informed the Hague Tribunal about it and supplied it with all available records. One of the most popular theories concerning the seizure of Srebrenica by Mladic's troops is that it was an act of revenge against Muslims. A 1993 UN resolution called on peacekeeping forces to disarm the combat formations that had entrenched themselves in Srebrenica. The Muslim enclave was declared a demilitarized zone. A Dutch battalion of Blue Berets was dispatched to monitor the ceasefire. But instead of disarming the Muslim formations, as they had committed themselves to under the agreement on Srebrenica signed by me and General Moyon, the United Nations forces turned those safe areas into terrorist and fundamentalist bases from where our villages and towns were attacked. Starting from 1993, we haven't taken a single action against Srebrenica, despite watching how the Muslim side was being armed. Sometimes they even used helicopters to airlift weapons from Iran. The Serb army waited for the disarmament of Nasser Orich's troops for nearly two years before Ratko Mladic decided to storm Srebrenica in the summer of 1995. Serbian troops captured the city on July the 11th. According to another theory, the government of Bosnia and Herzegovina simply gave Srebrenica away to the Serbs. In 1993, myself and other public figures from Srebrenica met with Bosnia's president, Alija Izetbegovic, in Sarajevo. This is what he said to us. If the Serbs entered Srebrenica and something like 5,000 Muslims die, that would create a good excuse for a NATO invasion. NATO forces would then start bombarding Serbian units. Thousands of dead bodies on both sides. Mothers without children, wives without husbands. Distrust and hatred between those who were once neighbours. That is the outcome of the standoff in Srebrenica. Crimes were committed by both sides. Most of the Muslims were shot and killed. A ballistic test shows that they were killed from a distance. This may mean that some of them died in battle. Most of the crimes against Serbs were not perpetrated with firearms. They were simply murdered in cold blood or their heads were chopped off. Mr. Orich. The Hague Tribunal gave the commander of the group of Muslim troops, Nasser Orich, two years in prison. But after a second trial, he was acquitted. And finds Orich not guilty. In 2008, he was arrested by Bosnian police for extortion and unlawful possession of arms. Today, the former commander feels comfortable in his home in the Bosnian town of Tuzla. People in my country, Serbia, feel very bitter about the rulings of the Hague Tribunal simply because they reflect double standards. The pertinent question is whether the expertise of the tribunal was high enough. There are also questions about the professionalism of those who belittled the guilt of the accused. Although Radko Mladic was already on the wanted list, up until 2000, he took no special precautions to go into hiding. <laughs> Serbia's government had not even stripped him of his bodyguards.
In the 90s, Radko Mladic lived in Belgrade, in the house where his son now has an office for his small firm. From 2000 onwards, Serbian police began regular roundups and searches in the homes of Mladic's closest relatives. It is still unclear where the general was at that time. I don't think I need to talk about my father's life. Even today it is the subject of too much speculation. I will not say when I saw him last before his arrest. I can only say that we stayed here together during the 1999 bombardment of Belgrade. I did see my father after his arrest, but I am not allowed to talk with the media about anything relating to the Hague Tribunal. The Serbian population was angered by Radko Mladic's arrest. There were actions in support of the general in many cities in Serbia. Demonstrators demanded that the government resign because they felt it was betraying the nation's heroes. In Belgrade, one such protest resulted in a clash with the police. This is a poster from a demonstration we held several years ago calling for Mladic to be handed over to the Hague Tribunal. It reads, our years are not for wasting, Mladic to the Hague. Activists from this Serbian youth organization want all people who committed crimes in the former Yugoslavia to be handed over to the Hague Tribunal. This petition campaign is just one example of their frequent activities on the streets of Belgrade to support the movement. These young people make no distinction between Muslim and Serb criminals. They feel tensions in the Balkans will die down once all those wanted by the Hague Tribunal are brought to justice. Each country in the territory of the former Yugoslavia has its own version of history. Each of them has its own heroes and criminals. This is a very bad situation. It is a breeding ground for future conflicts. The Serbian government has now handed over all the main Serbs wanted by the Hague Tribunal. Goran Hadžić, the last suspect on the wanted list, was captured on July the 20th, 2011. The European Union wants Serbia to meet quite a few conditions before it can become an EU member. So far we have been unable to comply with all of them. But the arrest of Karadic, Mladic and Hadic has paved the way for talks about our possible entry into the EU. Serbian society is split over the prospect of merging with Greater Europe. More than half of Serbs polled distrust the EU. While Radovan Karadzic was still in hiding from the police, the phrase Radovan Karadzic Street was written on the house where he lived. And after the arrest of Radko Mladic, a growing number of images of him might be seen appearing on the streets of Belgrade.